Hello everyone. This is Learn It All Academy. Welcome to the web tutorial series on electrical engineering. But to have a clear idea on electricity, we must know the magnets. We have all seen magnets. They attract the objects made of iron, nickel, cobalt, etc. But how exactly they got the property of magnetism? To know the causes of magnetism, we have to sneak into an atom. Our universe is made of mass and energy only. Whatever we see or feel is just some form of energy or the mass. All the objects of this universe are made of some very small units called the atoms. The atoms usually consist of some tiny particles even much smaller than the atom itself. These particles are of different kinds like quarks, leptons, gauge bosons, scalar bosons, etc. Actually, these are the classification of the particles according to their characteristics. These particles have some features according to their state like spin, charge, color, mass, etc. See this chart carefully to have a better idea of these particles. Although all these or some of these particles are present in all the atoms, but the major elements of the atom are electron, neutron and proton. The protons and neutrons are confined at the center of the atom in a small place referred as nucleus. They are bound together by a force called strong nuclear force resulting from sharing mesons. Electrons orbit the nucleus in multiple layers. Although electron is an elementary particle of lepton class, but the protons and neutrons are composed in the combination of more than one quarks and other particles. The protons are composed of three quarks. Among them, two are up quarks and one is down quark. Each up quark has a charge unit of plus 2 by 3 and each down quark has a charge unit of minus 1 by 3. So the total charge unit of the proton is They also have spin of plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 respectively. The spin resultant is plus 1 by 2. The neutrons are composed of 3 quarks. Among them, 1 is up quark and 2 down quark. Each up quark has a charge unit of plus 2 by 3 and each down quark has a charge unit of minus 1 by 3. So the total charge unit of the neutron is 0. They also have spin of plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 respectively. The spin resultant is thus minus 1 by 2. The charge unit of electron is minus 1 and it has a spin of 1 by 2. This is why the protons are considered as positive quantity, neutrons neutral and electrons negative quantity. Now any particle which has a characteristic of spin and charge with angular momentum experiences a charge flow through their axis 
just like this now this is nothing but the magnetism in the atomic level remember of the flux line of a magnet you have studied earlier in your high school you will definitely find similarity with this picture it is also responsible for the magnetic polarity and this is also the reason for which compasses can detect the north and south direction of our planet so the electron have a magnetic characteristics as it has both spin and angular momentum they have the flow of charges through their axis which affects any nearby particles as a form of force protons and neutrons also have magnetic behavior as a result of the cumulative magnetic characteristics of the quarks inside them but that force can't overcome the nucleus barrier for the strong nuclear force so the magnetic property of an atom is majorly caused by the electrons in any atom the electrons can rotate in both clockwise and anticlockwise direction on its axis while orbiting the nucleus now in some specific orbit if two electrons rotating in opposite direction with each other are present then they cancel the magnetic effect of each other but for the electrons which don't have their opposite pair are responsible for the magnetism of any material and the intensity of magnetism depends upon the number of these lone electrons more the number of lone electrons more magnetic is the material suppose an atom has three orbits in the first orbit there are two electrons rotating in opposite direction with each other in the second orbit there are five electrons among them three are rotating clockwise and two are rotating anti clockwise in the third orbit there are four electrons among which three are rotating clockwise and one is rotating anti clockwise so the magnetism chart in order to the orbit will be so we get total unit is 3 so we can say the material is magnetic now the atoms have a higher number of lone electrons are called ferromagnetic materials they are strongly affected by any magnetic field iron nickel cobalt etc are the examples of ferromagnetic materials here we should look into another important information the atoms which has more number of lone electrons hence have a strong magnetic character creates a ferromagnetic material but they remain haphazardly arranged inside the material and cancels the magnetism of each other so although containing atoms with highly magnetic character the material itself shows no magnetism but when it comes under a strong magnetic field the inner atoms arrange themselves into parallel linear chains and starts to behave as a magnet the atoms having a very small number of lone electrons are called paramagnetic materials as they show lower alteration under a magnetic field the atoms having no significant lone electron is called diamagnetic material they show almost no response to magnetic field although some materials show diamagnetic property as well as paramagnetic property due to lower number of unpaired lone electrons let's see some examples of the three type of materials ferromagnetic
डायमैग्नेटिक एंड पैरामैग्नेटिक Okay, now we have a clear idea on magnetism, but how are they related to electricity? Let's know. The atoms having only one or two lone electrons cannot align themselves in a linear order under a magnetic field. So whenever the change of magnetic field occurs, they leave the lone electron to stabilize itself. This electron is taken by the atom next to it which also releases another electron for making place for the new one. Thus the electron flow occurs serially through all the atoms of the material. This flow of electron is called electricity. The red marking is showing the flow of charge which is considered in the opposite direction of the electron flow. So electricity can be produced by keeping a changing magnetic field near a paramagnetic material. Now if the electrons flowing through a conductor is compared with water flowing through a pipe, then the pressure in the water source for which the water is forced to flow through the pipe resembles the voltage and the flow of water can resemble the electric current. Now you might have a very common question in your mind. How does a light bulb close when it is connected to an electrical line? Well, you will often get the most common answer. Electricity flows through a thin wire in the light bulb called the filament. The filament has a high resistive value, so the filament heats up for its internal resistance and glows. But what is this resistance? And how exactly it generates heat? Now resistance is the amount of friction that a material will put against electricity flowing through it. In other words, the amount of friction the electrons face while flowing through a material is called the resistance of the significant material. What happens if anyone pulls a heavy block of metal through the roads? It heats up due to the friction of the earth with its base. Same thing happens for electricity also. The resistance brings a rise in temperature of the material in current flow. Now think, will the friction be same for a smooth concrete road and an uneven road made by pebbles? No, it will differ. So we can see that the uneven pebbles creates more friction than smooth concrete slabs. This happens for the electron flow also. For different materials, the internal friction to the electron flow are different. Some materials are too smooth for the electron flow while some are very rough for the electron flow. We call this the resistivity of the material. The resistivity of copper is 1.68 to 1.72 and the resistivity of lead is 22. So some amount of electrical current while flowing through both the material, the lead will heat up more than the copper. Now if a round substance flows through a tube, then the friction will be higher for the narrow tube than a wider tube. Same happens for the electron. Lower the cross section of the material, higher the amount of resistance. Also in case of 
drawing a material through a road. Longer the road, higher the amount of the heat generated by friction. In case of electron flow also, more the length of the material, higher is the amount of resistance. So now you can understand that the resistance of a material depends upon the length, cross-sectional area and the resistivity of the significant material. Okay friends, so I think you now have a clear idea on electricity as well as the effect of magnetism in electricity. In the next tutorial, we will learn the generation process of electricity. We will also have the concepts on three phase, single phase and the maths related to electrical engineering, the elementary maths. If you like our video, then please press the subscribe button and like and if you need to know anything related to electrical engineering, you can always post in comment box and we will try our level best to answer all your queries. Thank you.